Chapter Thirty of Anna Karenina, Book Two. This is a LibriVox recording. All LibriVox recordings are in the public domain. For more information or to volunteer, please visit LibriVox.org. Recording by Bruce Peary. Anna Karenina by Leo Tolstoy, translated by Constance Garnett. Book Two, Chapter Thirty. In the little German watering-place to which the Scherbatskys had betaken themselves, as in all places, indeed, where people are gathered together, the usual process, as it were, of the crystallization of society went on, assigning to each member of that society a definite and unalterable place, just as the particle of water in frost definitely and unalterably takes the special form of the crystal of snow so each new person that arrived at the springs was at once placed in his special place first scherbatsky samt gemahlen und tochter by the apartments they took and from their name and from the friends they made were immediately crystallized into a definite place marked out for them there was visiting the watering-place that year a real german fürsten in consequence of which the crystallizing process went on more vigorously than ever Princess Scherbatskaya wished, above everything, to present her daughter to this German princess, and the day after their arrival she duly performed this rite. Kitty made a low and graceful curtsey in the very simple, that is to say very elegant, frock that had been ordered her from Paris. The German princess said, I hope the roses will soon come back to this pretty little face and for the Scherbatskys certain definite lines of existence were at once laid down, from which there was no departing. The Scherbatskys made the acquaintance, too, of the family of an English lady somebody, and of a German countess and her son, wounded in the last war, and of a learned Swede, and of Monsieur Canut and his sister. But yet, inevitably, the Scherbatskys were thrown most into the society of a Moscow lady, Marya Yevgenyevna Ratishcheva, and her daughter, whom Kitty disliked, because she had fallen ill like herself over a love affair, and a Moscow colonel, whom Kitty had known from childhood and always seen in uniform and epaulettes, and who now, with his little eyes and his open neck and flowered cravat, was uncommonly ridiculous and tedious, because there was no getting rid of him. When all this was so firmly established, Kitty began to be very much bored, especially as the prince went away to Carlsbad and she was left alone with her mother. She took no interest in the people she knew, feeling that nothing fresh would come of them. Her chief mental interest in the watering-place consisted in watching and making theories about the people she did not know. It was characteristic of Kitty that she always imagined everything in people in the most favorable light possible especially in those she did not know. And now, as she made surmises as to who people were, what were their relations to one another, and what they were like, Kitty endowed them with the most marvelous and noble characters, and found confirmation of her idea in her observations. Of these people, the one that attracted her most was a Russian girl who had come to the watering-place with an invalid Russian lady, Madame Stahl, as everyone called her madame stahl belonged to the highest society but she was so ill that she could not walk and only on exceptionally fine days made her appearance at the springs in an invalid carriage but it was not so much from ill health as from pride so princess scherbatskaya interpreted it that madame stahl had not made the acquaintance of any one among the russians there the russian girl looked after madame stahl and besides that she was as kitty observed on friendly terms with all the invalids who were seriously ill and there were many of them at the springs and looked after them in the most natural way this russian girl was not as kitty gathered related to madame stahl nor was she a paid attendant madame stahl called her varenka and other people called her mademoiselle varenka apart from the interest kitty took in this girl's relations with madame stahl and with other unknown persons kitty as often happened felt an inexplicable attraction to mademoiselle varenka and was aware when their eyes met that she too liked her of mademoiselle varenka one would not say that she had passed her first youth but she was as it were a creature without youth she might have been taken for nineteen or for thirty if her features were criticized separately she was handsome rather than plain 
in spite of the sickly hue of her face she would have been a good figure too if it had not been for her extreme thinness and the size of her head which was too large for her medium height but she was not likely to be attractive to men she was like a fine flower already past its bloom and without fragrance though the petals were still unwithered moreover she would have been unattractive to men also from the lack of just what kitty had too much of of the suppressed fire of vitality and the consciousness of her own attractiveness she always seemed absorbed in work about which there could be no doubt and so it seemed she could not take interest in anything outside it it was just this contrast with her own position that was for kitty the great attraction of mademoiselle varenka kitty felt that in her in her manner of life she would find an example of what she was now so painfully seeking interest in life a dignity in life apart from the worldly relations of girls with men which so revolted kitty and appeared to her now as a shameful hawking about of goods in search of a purchaser the more attentively kitty watched her unknown friend the more convinced she was this girl was the perfect creature she fancied her and the more eagerly she wished to make her acquaintance the two girls used to meet several times a day and every time they met kitty's eyes said who are you what are you are you really the exquisite creature i imagine you to be but for goodness sake don't suppose her eyes added that i would force my acquaintance on you i simply admire you and like you i like you too and you're very very sweet and i should like you better still if i had time answered the eyes of the unknown girl kitty saw indeed that she was always busy either she was taking the children of a russian family home from the springs or fetching a shawl for a sick lady and wrapping her up in it or trying to interest an irritable invalid or selecting and buying cakes for tea for some one soon after the arrival of the Sherbatskys, there appeared in the morning crowd at the springs two persons who attracted universal and unfavorable attention these were a tall man with a stooping figure and large hands in an old coat too short for him with black simple and yet terrible eyes and a pock-marked kind-looking woman very badly and tastelessly dressed recognizing these persons as russians kitty had already in her imagination begun constructing a delightful and touching romance about them but the princess having ascertained from the visitors list that this was nikolai levin and marya nikolaevna explained to kitty what a bad man this levin was and all her fancies about these two people vanished not so much from what her mother told her as from the fact that it was konstantin's brother this pair suddenly seemed to kitty intensely unpleasant this levin with his continual twitching of his head aroused in her now an irrepressible feeling of disgust it seemed to her that his big terrible eyes which persistently pursued her expressed a feeling of hatred and contempt and she tried to avoid meeting him End of chapter thirty